This is the Central Pacific, some 2,200 miles west of Pearl. Slightly over a decade ago, during World War II, these Pacific waters witnessed the fast carrier task forces of Halsey, Spruance, Mitcher, and McCain. But this was the past. Today, a new kind of history is being made in these same waters. These are the ships of Joint Task Force 7 at sea between Eniwetok and Bikini Atolls. Aboard these ships, men wait. Wait for the flash that rivals a thousand suns. And then the towering, boiling cloud heralding the firing of another thermonuclear weapon at the Atomic Energy Commission's Eniwetok Proving Ground. Any we talk, 162 degrees, 15 minutes east, 11 degrees, 30 minutes north. Once Joint Task Force 7 swings into its operational phase, the waters around any we talk and Bikini Atolls will be your home for a number of months. Any we talk is the headquarters ashore for the commander, who may be Army, Navy, or Air Force, his staff, and task group commanders during the between-shot periods. Bikini Atoll is the site of a base camp which is used primarily by scientific personnel in preparing for shots at that atoll and is the site of a Navy recreation camp. These two atolls, used as firing sites during overseas tests, are the focal points of activity within a 400,000 square mile danger area established by the AEC as a protective measure. Organizationally, JTF-7 carries a typical Joint Task Force staff divided about equally between the three services. The command is organized into five task groups, 7.1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. 7.1, scientific, is concerned with all nuclear aspects of the tests. 7.2, Army, provides ground security, certain logistic support, and operates communications with some one and a half million dollars worth of signal equipment. 7.4, Air Force, exercises air traffic control in the control area directs operation of all test and Air Force support aircraft, is in charge of search and rescue functions in the control area, and provides weather service and inter-atoll air transport. 7.5, a civilian engineering task group, provides base logistics support, operates a boat pool, and builds structures for scientific programs. 7.3, Navy, has a wide range of responsibilities during the conduct of overseas testing. As a part of this task group, your duties will be many and varied. You will provide aerial and surface security and safety patrols in the danger area. You will provide for surface ship transportation between the ZI and the enemy talk proving ground and between atolls small boat, and helicopter transport at Bikini Atoll, shipboard command and communications facilities for operations afloat and support of various scientific projects. It doesn't really matter whether you're a seaman or a task group commander. You're going to have responsibilities, duties, and you will put in a lot of hours during any given test series at the Anyway Talk Proving Ground. It won't really matter either if you spend your time at Anyway Talk or Bikini Atoll. Any way you look at them, they're not Honolulu. Once off the ship, all the islands are much alike. You'll find one island clear of all vegetation for some type of scientific study while another will be lush with tropical foliage, almost as though it had been passed by in man's search for the mysteries of the atom. Some of the islands are unoccupied. 
while others echo the sounds of traffic, aircraft, and people involved in the pursuit of testing activities. There is one thing that is common throughout all islands of both atolls. They are coral, flat, and you'll never be more than 10 feet above sea level unless you have a penchant for climbing palm trees or photo towers. Climatically, it's much like the Hawaiian Islands. Geographically, it definitely is not. Of all the responsibilities laid on the Navy task group, perhaps the most important is the capability for command and communications afloat. When time starts to run out before the firing of a high-yield weapon at either any Weetalk or Bikini Atoll, the exodus, the evacuation, begins. Aboard the command ship of the Atomic Fleet go the task force commander, his deputies, advisors, and key scientists to conduct operations from afloat. From the time of evacuation on, this ship becomes Joint Task Force 7 at sea. This, of course, applies to only the big ones. For the small ones, you'll probably remain at anchorage and watch from there. Aboard the other ships of the fleet, as they head for the open sea, the daily routine, in line with assigned duties, is carried out. If you're a carrier man, the chances are you'll be making a last check of your copter. There are no fighters on board, only choppers to carry strangely garbed men back to shot-blasted islands to recover scientific records. If you're a destroyer man, the chances are that you're out on patrol, making a surface check to be sure no trespassers are inside the danger area. In addition, you'll be launching balloons and firing rockets to obtain the latest weather data. If you're an airman, you'll be high over the ocean making your security check of both air and sea. Or you're a crew member of the A3D, one of the Navy's effects aircraft waiting at your airborne station to subject you and your plane to the heat and shock that follows the detonation of a high-yield weapon. If you're attached to one of the two strangely equipped Liberty ships of the task force, you'll find your duties interesting and possibly unnerving at times. These are the fallout collection ships that are deliberately sent into radioactive areas after a shot to collect data on how much and how fast the radioactive material falls back on the ocean surface. At shot time, Task Group 7.3 is an entity made up of many things. The ships, the planes, the men. You may be the flagship skipper or his navigator, a talker, a helmsman, a seaman, the task group commander, a signal man, or a gunner's mate on a destroyer firing rockets to 100,000 feet to radio back winds and temperature aloft. You might be the airman thousands of feet above the ships, or the task force commander getting a last minute briefing from your weather officers. You could be a crewman on the LSD. Not too many hours ago, your ship brought the weapon on its barge to the firing site. What you saw as inanimate metal will soon erupt into the flame and fire of a hydrogen bomb. You could be alongside the scientist who leans against the rail of your ship, sweating out the last few minutes and seconds. Will his weapon succeed or fail? You may be locked deep in the hull of a fallout ship, shielded by steel and lead, also sweating it out. Or you may be looking over the shoulder of a scientist at a control panel on the command ship as he sets in motion the arming and firing mechanisms. Minus ten, niner, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, T-zero. What of the danger, you ask? Certainly, the element of danger is always present. 
Once the flash and fire dissipate, only the cloud remains. But from this cloud will come the radioactive fallout. As the cloud boils to heights of 150,000 feet, far below the Yags, the collection ships, guided from a control room below deck, steam intentionally into the fallout area to collect data. Fallout is not something you can feel or see or taste. It is an intangible something that shows up as the kick of a needle on the meters of sensitive detection instruments. Once within the areas of fallout, the Navy's means of combating this danger is brought into play. Washdown systems are activated that cover the ships with a fine spray. This is one way of reducing the contamination. Other techniques for cutting down or eliminating the hazards of radiation call for liberal applications of Norwegian steam. Some of you may call it elbow grease. This system utilizes a series of washdowns with steam hoses and scrubbers. Radiation from fallout is a danger. No one has ever made claims to the contrary. But if you take the time to study it, learn its causes, effects, and limitations, you've won a major part of the battle. Instead of fearing, you understand. Instead of fleeing from an unseen danger, you live with it and accept it. Once a shot is over, the chances are you'll return to your anchorage to get ready for the next one, and at the same time, relax a little. There is a time for many things here in the Central Pacific. A time for play. And a time for work. A time to dream. And a time to worship. A time to think and a time for decision. You'll see all types of firings during your tour in the enemy talk proving ground. Small shots, big shots, air bursts, water bursts, underwater bursts, and land bursts. This is Task Group 7.3, Fleet Post Office, San Francisco.